Hi everyone, today we're going to take a look at free generators that I bought from eBay. Now the first two here are very common, they're being sold in bulk and you can find them easily. This one here is a little bit more rare and you probably won't find it too easily. Now if you take a look at these two, you can tell that they've definitely been used. Even though they're being sold in bulk, they're actually used items. Now I believe this one here was used as an electric garage door opener or electric blind, something like that. And this one here I'm not too sure about, but both of them you can find being sold in bulk and they're not too expensive. Now, the nice thing about these is they both use metal gears. A lot of cheap generators use plastic or nylon gears. So when you're really cranking it, the gears get ground down and it basically stops working after a while. So so although these are used, they've got metal gears and that's the most important thing. The motor you can always replace in the future, but the motors seem to be working fine as well. Now these two have an output, I believe, of around 12 to 24 volts, depending on how hard you crank them. Now this one here, I didn't really know much about until it arrived. And then as soon as it arrived, I saw these wires here and I recognized them immediately. They're telephone wires, like copper telephone wires. And this is actually like... I, I don't know, could you call it antique? Maybe. But it's from the old, old, olden days where you had to like wind up the thing before you wanted to make a phone call or if you wanted to make a remote location, like if you wanted to send a ring. But we'll come back to this one later because it's a little bit more unusual compared to these two. So the first test I want to do is with this five watt bulb. Now this is just an initial look. I'm not gonna do like a really in-depth look at these because I'm probably gonna do future projects with these. But this, oops, this is a five watt, so 12 volts, um, what's that? like? half an amp or less than half an amp but five watts basically so let's connect it to this motor and then i'm just using a screwdriver as a crank since it doesn't have a proper handle so we'll put this bulb here and i'll start spinning let me try and get it in a position where you can see the bulb uh, there we go so you can see that as i spin this it lights up oops now it is a little bit difficult it's not easy because you know you are generating electricity but let's turn this Now, of course, I'm like hunched over a camera and I'm trying to hold this. Um, in real life, what you do is like mount this to something, put a big handle on it so you've got lots of leverage. But using a short screwdriver will work. And if I crank it, you'll see the light come on. And if I crank it really hard, it'll be really bright. So that one works OK. Let's try the other one. OK, so I've got the bulb connected. Let's try and crank this one. There you go. Oops. Now, now, like I said, it's kind of difficult because I'm holding it and trying to turn it at the same time. And if I crank it really hard, you can see it goes very, very bright just for a brief moment. Now, although I'm not using a power meter, I think both of these have absolutely no problems generating at least five watts. Probably, I reckon this one is a little bit more powerful. I reckon it could probably put out 10 to 15 watts with a good handle in it. Um, in future videos, we'll do you know, more advanced testing, but for now, I'm just messing around with a few bulbs. Here's a 20 watt bulb. Now, I think this isn't gonna work, but let's just give it a go anyway. Oh, it's really, really difficult to turn this because, of course, the heavier the load, the more difficult this becomes to turn. Wow, that's really hard. Oh, we got a little tiny bit of light out of that. Let's try again. Yeah, I mean, I can get a tiny bit of light out of it, but that's very, very difficult to turn. So a 20 watt load is very difficult. Although, like I say, if you had a bigger handle on this with a good leverage, it would be much easier. So that's why I think you probably could get 20 watts out of this if you had a proper handle on it and if it was mounted properly. Now let's try something a little bit more interesting. Let's see if we can start this up. It operates on 12 volts, so it should work. And there you go, you see how it comes on? And I've got a hole in my sock, so we can actually test if this works properly. So there you go, it actually works okay, just generating power from this little motor here. And likewise, this motor has no problem doing it. Although you do have to spin this one a bit faster, so I guess it's a different gearing. Now this one here is a bit more difficult to measure because it has a very low current but a very high voltage. 
Um, I've measured, I think the highest I got was around 50 or 60 volts. So high voltage. Now this one is very, very interesting because it's, well, it's just old. Like everything is very heavy and solid. It's well made. We've got like these three horseshoe magnets here. And then we've got the bit inside that spins. Look, if I turn it, you'll see it spinning. And the gearing is quite limited. You can see that we've got this large gear on the outside going to this. So every one turn of this is maybe, I don't know, five of this, one to five, something like that. So even if you turn this quite slowly, the in ow, ow, ow. <laughs> okay, that's something you've got to be careful about. When you touch the output here, you get a shock because it is very high current. So it has no problems, you know, breaking through your skin. Unlike, say, 12 volts where you can touch it with your skin and you don't feel anything, this higher voltage, you get a bit of a shock. Um, that's funny. I've done that before, actually. So you have to be careful where you hold it. Now, of course, this is meant to be mounted permanently. Now, something to note with this is I believe it outputs AC. So I've got my multimeter here and we can measure the voltage. So you can see, even though I'm spinning it quite slowly, we already hit 25 volts. And then we hit 30, 35 volts. And I'm not really spinning it that fast because it's not mounted down properly. And I doubt this is very accurate because this is a super, super cheap multimeter from CDR King. So using this as a generator, of course, we're gonna need a rectifier and a voltage regulator. Um, so yeah, we're gonna need some stuff to work with this, but I think it's gonna be a really fun project. I love the fact that it's just so old and so heavy and well-built. And it's got a really interesting mechanism where when you turn this, it disengages, uh, there's a switch here, and it disengages it, watch. See that? And that is actually switching between different like inputs and outputs. I haven't really sat down and worked out exactly what it's doing, but you can see that when you do turn it, it disengages, and yeah, I don't know exactly what it's doing. Um, I haven't really looked into these really, but I think they call them magnetos, telephone magnetos, I'm not sure, but just thought it's really interesting. I didn't know what it was when I bought it, um, it has like one really bad picture basically so i couldn't really see what it was but yeah it's very very interesting so i'm hoping to have more projects with these generators in the future so if you enjoyed this video please give a thumbs up and subscribe thanks for watching